for the folks at home, uh, introduce yourself in a little 30 seconds about who you are and what you do. Oh, okay. Well, hi guys, I'm Shirley and I own a beauty salon called Fair's Den Beauty. And we do everything from waxing, tints, tans, nails, um, aesthetic treatments, you name it. We do obsessed with facials, skincare, massage, just a bit of everything really. Fantastic. And how long have you been running the salon? So salon's been open now just shy of three years. Right. And um, previous to that, though, I had another little small salon that I was in for five years. And then previous to that, I ran and managed uh, another salon for 10 years. So kind of been doing this for a wee while now. Since you were five. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get points for that, Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> God loves a try right here. Uh, there you go. Um, yeah, and we got um, connected by uh, our mutual friend, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Um, and it's so funny because you were interested mm -hmm. in starting a podcast and getting started with mm -hmm. that. Uh, and you're kind of making your first inroads into that. Um, yeah. And what's it called? The podcast is going to be called Shirley Says. I, I still <laughs> think it should be called Shirley Shares. <laughs> co-hosted by, co by Sean name Connery but, sorry yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if Shirley says is a good name for it I like it I think, not, I think it's good we're going for it. I, it purely because I did an awful lot of videos um, on Facebook and Instagram for the salon mm -hmm. and then um, I randomly called them Shirley says uh, yeah and it kind of just took off and people really liked it. So I thought, let's, do you know what, if, if people like it, let's just, let's just keep going with it. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it works. Why not? It works. So the, the whole idea behind the podcast is what, a, a kind of continuation of a, a virtual continuation of what you're doing in the salon, but with tips and tricks and that kind of set of things. Yeah, no, not really. So <laughs> like, that would be. <laughs> That would have been a great idea, Greg. I wish you'd been in, in my head when I was making the decisions <laughs> on this. So, no, essentially, I had um, I've been chatting to lots of clients since the doors closed in the salon, which was about two weeks ago now. And I just felt, <laughs> how big headed is this? Everyone's just missing the chat. So I was trying to think. All the, all the people that <laughs> I like see they, daily. They pay for the treatments, but really... They miss me. Yeah. Do you That's know what? what it's is. really not about the treatments here, Greg. I think we're missing the point here. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> As my mum likes to say, they're not, the treatments are free. You're really paying for the chat. So I like actually, that. I, I thought, like that. That's good. I didn't ever want to use it just in case people thought their treatment was actually free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, obviously that's not practical. No. It's not practical. So I thought in my head, why don't I do a little podcast so that clients or anybody who fancies can come on and listen to my chatty chirpy voice every single day just for like 15 minutes i don't want to like drive anybody insane or anything how, how long do you think it's going to be before people find your voice really really annoying i don't know it's 15 it's minutes like the cutoff time yeah i feel like we get to 15 minutes and maybe jobs are good and mm -hmm. then the next day maybe they've forgotten how annoying I was the previous day so so yeah we'll just it's just random chat and I'm overly positive personality in life in general mm -hmm. so I thought why don't I just transfer that onto everybody because maybe we're all just needing a wee bit uplifted mm -hmm. and a bit of a blather a bit of chat a bit of random chats and some sort of funny little stories that I have about my parents. <laughs> All right, do they know about this? Are they, are, they, are they aware of what's actually happening? No, and I think the thing is they don't even know what a podcast is, so it'll be absolutely okay. fine. And they don't go online. They know nothing about computers. So you so can I basically completely destroy them online and they're not going to know. They're never going to know. Ignorance is bliss. This is do what you, I hear. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. And... 
I think um, they're going to tell probably them. they wouldn't even bother listening. <laughs> right. I'm the same. Having... I, have, I have two brothers, and they I don't think they've ever listened to any of my podcasts ever. No, I, I'll be honest. I can't imagine. My, my family have the joy, the daily joy of me. So I don't know if they would want to sort of tag that on to have more Shirley time. Mm. I, I just don't know if that's a, a practical thing for them. I don't blame them. More Shirley time. That, that, that's, that's kind of like a bonus podcast thing. I, I know. Could you imagine? I mean, how lucky could people be that they get to hang out with me? I mean, I just, I just feel that this is going to be great for people. They just don't even know it yet. The, the dawning of realization of mm-hmm. how much fun we're going to have on this podcast mm-hmm. is not fully realized yet. And how often are you going to do it? Um, we're hopefully going to be putting one out every day. That's great. I mean, if you can do that, that's insane, but it's great. You know. I yeah, mean, I've just got so much to And chat. you're just going to be randomly chatting. You're not going to be doing any editing or anything. You're literally just going to go no, on. I'm not techy enough. I'll be honest, Greg, even you told me I had to wear a pair of headphones. Mm -hmm. So like actually the editing thing and the sort of, no, it's not going to happen. We're just going to have to um, go with it. Mm -hmm. But then when I did my Shirley Says Facebook videos, I never edited anything. You can tell. I just, yeah, I know you can. (laughs) But I just feel, is that not more authentic? And actually it's a bit funnier. And yeah, I mean, also it's, it's, I don't know how to do it. So. Yeah, I think, but I think that that would actually be quite funny. I mean, if you actually just kind of embrace the whole, okay, I have no idea what the hell's going on with any yeah. of this technology, and and then fine, good. You know, that's part and of the charm. Even the fact that yeah, and I feel like even the fact I've managed to work out how to do a podcast hmm. is mind blowing to me. I didn't work out how to do it. I told you. No, I asked it. <laughs> Greg, even the fact that I managed to go on a Zoom call with you to work out how to do it. Yeah, well, I was kind of, blowing. I was vaguely confused about that myself, actually. <laughs> so strange getting used to all of this this new tech. But I know so, it's brilliant. So when did you first get interested in, in the whole beauty therapy side of things? I mean, was that did you did you go and study that in in you know college or, or any of that, or, or was it just? Yeah. So I suppose it's it, it's kind of weird. Like um, I had been living in the states and I came home just after I turned 18. And before I had lived in the States, I wanted to be like a vet nurse and like do things with animals because I'm just completely animal daft. I think animals are just beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then when I came back, I realized that I literally had no ability to do that. <laughs> I, just, I faint uh, the minute I see blood. So I thought this is not a practical nice. thing. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I love patting animals, but would I be able to like, no, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. No. So I ended up um, just doing loads of really bizarre jobs. So um, every job that you can think of, I've pretty much had it. Um, I used to work in pubs, clubs. I used to work in supermarkets. I worked in coffee shops. I worked in sunbed shops, you name it. I worked for the council at one point, used to run a school, I was a school secretary. I don't know how really? I managed. I know, I don't know how I, I pulled this off. Um, okay. it's, it was, it was um, interesting for everyone involved, I'm sure. And then um, I decided to be an air hostess. I did that for a bit. I've pretty much done anything and then I just realized like um well actually it wasn't me it was my beauty therapist at the time was just going on and on about why aren't you a beauty therapist you would be perfect for this and I was running out of excuses not to do it and at the time I was working in a pub and I was sort of managing it um anyway and then one of the other girls that worked there she was doing beauty at college and she was a year above me and she was like I love it and she was she was like in her first year so I then went into college and sort of kept working at the pub part-time and she told me straight after I started that she hated it (laughs) and she thought it was the worst (laughs) thing ever and by this point I was already invested and I just loved it and I thought ah so we ended up switching jobs She ended up um, actually uh, going back and getting my job in the pub 
And I ended up going and working in the salon where she worked. It was very strange, but it all worked out rather well. And how long ago was that? That was about... Oh, you, oh, you don't want to say? No, 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 no I actually had... No, <laughs> it's not that. I literally am in denial that I've been a beauty therapist now for 18 years. Right, okay. It's the longest that I've ever stuck anything out. Obviously, because I'm so young, I couldn't have stuck anything out for longer than Obviously, that. yes. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, Greg. Correct answer. And um, I think when I started beauty at 20, actually, I was considered pretty old because most of the girls had come straight they do the, from the, ju- the junior thing days. and all that as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Well, I had been living in the States. I'd then taken a good couple of years out to do lots of different sort of uh, jobs. And I think the main overwhelming sort of thing I felt was I just love people mm-hmm. and I just want to hang out and have chat. And being in an office and trying all these different jobs was great, but it just made me realize I just wanted to get in and chat to folk and Mm -hmm. be part of their lives which is so cool and you get that as a beauty therapist Mm -hmm. um it's funny i remember seeing you at a business events thing you actually won an award um um, and this was about the east and barnshire business awards is that what it was this was the east and barnshire business awards yeah couldn't believe i managed to win that i don't know how that happened Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, I was well chuffed. But no, I mean, it was all very impressive stuff. It was kind of like, all oh, right, she kind of seems pretty clued up. It, hilariously, going to back to your point about saying about how you're terrible with technology, you won, the, it was like the technology prize. Was, I won the Digital Innovation Award. Yeah. And I was, I had my mind blown. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe that I could win that. I was, um, I was with, I brought my friends um, to the awards as um, my salon manager couldn't make it. So right. um, I only had one seat. So I ended up saying to my best friend, look, come with me. And she is incredibly techy and she's a maths teacher and she did computing at uni. Right. And she just spent the entire time sitting going, this is weird. How are you up for a digital innovation award? I was the last one to get any tech. I actually, one of my boyfriends bought me my very first phone and I just told him where to stuff it. I was like, I do not want this controlling sort of, you're going to check up on me. I just hate, I hated it. And now look at our lives with technology. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, where would I be without my phone? And I can pretty much run my business off my phone. I can do my accounts, I can do all my social media, I can run my diaries. I mean, everything that I do is pretty much online Mm -hmm. for the business. And it's phenomenal for my team because if someone's feeling unwell or if something's happening, they can look at their diaries, they can can coordinate their entire life on on the apps. It's, It's fantastic. I love it. So how is, um, how, how are they coping just now? I mean, cause obviously they're, they're not at the salon. Nobody's at the salon. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's been a weird, I'll be totally honest. I think nobody really knows how we're coping with it until we're kind of in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think the first week we were all sort of emotionally drained because we could see it was going to happen, but we didn't know, nobody knows how long it's gonna last. And with social distancing potentially going to be extended, even when the world kind of returns back to work in a sense, um, I would imagine that the salons probably won't for a good few months as we can't socially distance, we can't do social distancing with yeah. the types of treatments yeah. that we do. So I think the the team are being phenomenally upbeat, uh, probably because I'm really upbeat, and we're applying. I'm applying for grants. I'm doing absolutely everything I can do to take that sort of financial pressure off everyone. 
Mm-hmm. How and, many people are um, in the team? I got eleven team members. That's a lot. I, it's a lot. It's a lot, and um, I and I'm very aware that people's lives are going to change in such massive ways that probably we don't even know yet. So I'm sort of very open to the fact that potentially some of my team might have a break and go, maybe I won't come back. Or some will decide that they want to work more. Or some will change com- completely change direction. I mean, actually, nobody really knows, do they? No, I don't think anybody knows anything at this stage. You just kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Just yeah, kind of, we actually, yeah, you know, we are. Going, and I think it's nice. We touch base with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you doing like um, a team Zoom call? Are you doing anything like that? Or are you just doing individuals? We're, so? we're doing at the moment. It's just too many of us at the moment to like make it that we wouldn't all just talk over each other. <laughs> and just like, and then it'd just be like everyone just going, ah, so at the moment I'm doing individual calls, which I think is really nice because I think people want to talk about how they're feeling, Yeah. which I yeah. don't know if we could really do collectively um, as a team. But I think the thing is, you know, well, it's part of your job as a business owner. It's kind of like almost like part-time counselor as well. You know? Oh, but, totally, totally. Uh, but especially yeah. in- yeah, I love a, a pet talk. <laughs> yeah. Especially as a beauty therapist as well. I mean. Yeah. The, the, the counselling side of things kind of comes with it, you know? Oh, definitely. I think it's such a big part of our um, industry and it's not really something we're trained for. And actually, it is something I would like us all to look into so that we could potentially actually have a wee bit of um, knowledge behind us rather than just life experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, sound, that was vaguely profound, Shirley. I know. <laughs> who'd have thought <laughs> my god um so you so, know what i am just i surprise myself every single day <laughs> so this salon's been going for like three years now right yeah um when did you win that award i have a feeling i won that award last may was it just yeah last yeah. year yeah it it feels like because it was one, it, it was one of these things that I, uh, you know, like I think it was like the day of the thing. Um, a friend of mine said, "Listen, I've got a spare ticket for the, the, this thing. You want to come along?" I'm like, "Yeah, all right." Yeah. And um, you know, and I ended up knowing a few people there, you know. But but it's so funny. I I do remember you winning that award because I was like, "Oh, that's actually a really cool idea." Just the fact that you were you know doing the app appointments thing and all that kind of thing. And I was yeah. wondering if there was other other businesses that were actually doing that in you know in the beauty sector. And, uh, and that kind of thing. And then I was also thinking of it from, from my own point of view, going, I wonder if, if you know, would I do something like that if I, if I was going to do that kind of side of things with the studio, um, you know, and people could book in to do that kind of stuff. And then I thought, no, that means I've got people coming in, which would be kind of annoying. Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you're invading my space, <laughs> you know. I know, uh, to be honest, the app thing, I was just so obsessed with doing it. And I wanted to do it when I was in the smaller salon. And there wasn't, it was only myself and one other team member. It was so small. And I decided that about six months before I opened the new salon, because it was, it, it just was painful to, to get going um, in terms of just like, council building restrictions and stuff like that. So everything was just incredibly slow. So I decided that rather than having the stress of starting this app once the new salon was open, why don't myself and the other member of my team, um, who's still with me, thankfully, um, we would just kind of crack on with it and get Mm -hmm. our heads around it. And, you know, um, I'm not I've never been naturally techy. I, I love tech and I'm really into it now. But it was not because I didn't really had no interest in it as a kid and it wasn't the same anyway, was it? Um, I never really took to it. So actually, the minute I got my app and it took ages to sort of set up, it's just been phenomenal. I absolutely love it. The salon just doesn't run without it. And mm-hmm. um, even... 
I've, I've even got like a sort of background sort of app which organizes all my stock and my scheduling of my staff and you know it just it just it's amazing it's phenomenal so do you find that it actually cuts down on an awful lot of the kind of admin side of, side of things that you would have to do yourself yeah and yeah absolutely it does i couldn't even contemplate running a team of 11 therapists um without it and i actually had just sold my second salon i sold that at the end of february so i actually had two sites running off this app um, which was another massive learning curve i think that's what i like to say instead of headache mm -hmm. and uh, that was um that worked phenomenally well once i sort of got my head around it but there's no way i could have ran two salons without it it just wouldn't have happened um yeah so yeah it's i yeah there's no way you could do anything on that scale Mm -hmm. so um what kind of this is the question i tend to ask loads of people um just an apology uh, in advance <laughs> no 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 it's just it's just i'm bringing it back to me um okay. <laughs> and, and my world uh which is you know more music um based um what, what kind of role does music play in your working life and your daily life do you do presumably you've got music playing in the salon and oh that, yeah it's yeah. huge what kind it's of stuff absolutely you, huge. what kind of stuff do you like you know, is the music that you play in the salon different from the kind of stuff that you like to listen to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm a massive Eminem fan, so I'll be totally honest. I can't imagine many of my clients really wanting to listen to hip hop and Jay-Z and Nas and yeah, the, it, it doesn't go with the atmosphere, does it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I've been told. I have to say I like listening to, well, I like listening to on certain, we've got music different days, um, different music on different days, if that makes sense in the yep. salon. Yeah. So at the weekends where it's a bit more of a sort of chilled out feel and more people are in getting their nails done and there's a bit more chatter, uh, then we play a lot of really chilled out country. <laughs> okay. I know that sounds bad, but I'm a huge country music fan well, and do you um, like like rascal flats keith urban that kind of modern kind of yeah, stuff yeah like right. lady antebellum yeah yeah oh yeah do you know just really nice chilled mellow um country which has got some lyrics in the background and then we're open till like 10 o'clock at night and um, monday to thursday and then in, so during the sort of That's really late. days it's really late. We open 9 a.m. till, well, we do when we're open. We're open 9 a.m. till 10 p.m., Monday to Thursday, and then 9 till 8 on a Friday. Um, wow. So, yeah, we do an awful lot of evening appointments purely to make sure um, the clients can um, come in around work. And they don't want to come in all weekends if they've got yeah. kids' parties and stuff on. Mm -hmm. So what we tend to find is we play quite sort of mellow classical but kind of nice not sort of stompy stuff quite chilled out especially when we do an awful lot of facials and massage yeah as my my team would call it plinkety plonkety music that's 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 actually a genre is it no well, we're all over that genre we are like we know all the tracks and the thing is even when i switch it off so at night, when I switch off the music before I head off about half past 10 at night, I, I, I realize I haven't listened to that in like two hours because right. it doesn't even just, register it just, it in my brain. Kind of, yeah. It just, that's the nice thing about it though, because it doesn't even annoy you because it's just so mellow. Mm -hmm. And it's not something you would listen to really at home, is it? Unless you have no personality whatsoever. Yes, yeah, or yeah. you just want to zone out. Yeah. So, do you have like a, a you know do you have like a morning playlist yourself like, to get yourself more? Of it? Are oh. you are you like because I mean you seem really really organised with everything to do with your business and that set of things. Are you somebody I'm that's obsessive. kind of like? Are you like that with like your your routine? Do you have like a morning routine? It's like I'm, I'm yeah. picking up at this time and I do this and I do that and then I do that. 
Yeah, and I've even got an evening bedtime routine. My uh, morning routine, I have a playlist that I've made up which nobody else would ever want to listen to and it's very much <laughs> 90s hip-hop and R&B because uh, cool. they're the classics. Um, mm -hmm. Ice Cube, I, NWA, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of that. Ice I, I saw Ice Cube in concert back in 1994. Oh, I'm so jealous. The same... <laughs> Four days later, I saw Take That, <laughs> which is the I've weirdest collection of con I've, concerts in one yeah, week. In one week. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good, though. I like a bit of Take That. Um, and I've got like a sort of running, I like have running playlists mm -hmm. that are like country, that are like set to the beat of like if I'm doing a fast run or if I'm doing like a longer run. I've got morning playlists for when I'm wanting, I know I've got a really busy day and I want to like go, right, kickstart this day. Yeah. I've got chill out playlists for like the weekend. And then I also have an evening. Uh, I listen to, well, I have a small dog. Um, she's called Sophie and she's very old. And she's very, um, she's 14. She's a wee old lady. And um, about a couple, about six months ago, I realized that she loves yoga meditation music. <laughs> so we now <laughs> listen. <laughs> so in fact, I think it's been going on for longer than this now. So at night, Sophie and I, to go to sleep, well, the problem is she's fast asleep the minute she hears this music. Right. She gets into her bed. And by the time I go and brush my teeth and do like my nighttime routine, and get into my bed, she is already snoring. It's very off-putting, but mm. really quite sweet. I'm a, I'm a sucker for my wee, my little fur baby. And um, if she's happy bunny, then who am I to argue? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got a playlist for pretty much every eventuality. And then it, I it would appear so. It would. Um, and then when I'm out walking, because I walk a lot. Um, normally. I, normal, yes, <laughs> normally. Um, in my usual life, uh, then I would listen to podcasts. So what do you listen a, to podcast-wise? I really, I don't know if you're a fan of Tim Ferriss. Yes, Timothy I listen Ferris. to Tim, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a big Timothy Ferriss fan. Mm. I'm a uh, big skip Anthony Robbins. past the, the first 10, 15 minutes of all the sponsorship yeah. stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. God, this again, you know. I know. No, I told this, skip past all that. And his mindset and the way he looks at any issue or situation is just, oh, stunning. So I literally, yeah, I, I read, I've read most of his books. I went to see Anthony Robbins last year down in Excel in London. I remember, remember telling you off of that before. He's phenomenal. Uh, I'm a huge Tony fan. And uh, I mean, you enjoyed it, but you were still kind of like, yeah, this is weird. It's like a cult. Please tell oh, me. Oh, it's like a cult. Yeah. And it's very weird. And even though I lived in America, I was like, oh, we're high fiving everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's so uber American. It's yeah. so uber American, which to be honest, the first day I was in it, I thought, oh, for Pete's mm -hmm. sake. And I was sort of in my head because I was on my own. And um, by, by the fifth day, I was just like high-fiving anybody that would even look my way. <laughs> I was having a great time. And, you know, that's the one thing I would say about um, Tony. Um, he's very infectious. And, but yeah, I, I can yeah. see how they can start cults. I can see how somebody can start a cult now. Oh, yeah. That it's, it's, all a, it's all that kind of cult of personality thing. It is, isn't it? Um, so uh, as much as I came away from it going, do you know what, I, I would never go back. I didn't feel that it was life changing. I, I already felt I had the tools to do it. But then, but then I kind of looked at it in the sense that I've read all his books. Mm -hmm. I listened to most of his it's podcasts. It's exactly the same sh stuff regurgitated. Don't pretend you don't swear because we're not okay. swearing. <laughs> it's the same stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll say that, but I won't say the F word on my podcast. So, <laughs> even though so, I swear like a trooper, maybe. yeah, usually, but I do hear swearing is a form of intelligence, high intellect. yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, yeah. so it must be because, um, you and I are both both on that page, exactly. Yeah, I, I swear far too much, yeah, but, um, yeah, okay, 
Right. So um, I'm going to ask oh, yeah. you a deeply, deeply heavy question. Right. Oh. Right. Many okay. years from now, because uh, I mean, you're do doing quite a bit of self-reflection with all, all of this. Kind oh, of oh yeah, we're over analyzing everything. Uh -huh. But with the Timothy Ferris thing and all that, mm -hmm. uh, and Tim does all his transcendental meditation and all his weird mm, stuff that he's that. into. Um, many, many years from now, when you okay. look back at your life, mm -hmm. what would you like your legacy to be? To those oh, that's you have a left really behind. good question. I know it's a really it good a really, one. It's a really good one, but just said in a really funny voice. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> a, you really? know what that was like? This is it was really? like a therapist voice or like uh, a uh, I know, I was, I was, I've I was, got a telephone voice. So that that, that was my mock that. therapist voice. It was like, take, take oh, okay. seriously. This is the moment that you breathe deeply uh -huh. in the, through your nose, nose and out through your mouth. Uh -huh. There you go. So question. just recap, what was the question? <laughs> the question was, many years from now, when you're no longer with us, what would you like oh, when your legacy? I'm no longer with you. When you're no longer, when many okay. of them, you know, what would you like your legacy to be? When people think about Shirley, what is it they're going to say? I don't even want to tell you the full sort of extremes of it all, because to be honest, your mind would be blown at this moment okay uh, you, can't, you can't say that and then not say <laughs> i think the key thing here is how can we positively change the world this is my question that i ask myself every single day and mm -hmm. actually um and the answer is so gel nails and massages absolutely uh, let's think even bigger let's think mindsets yes so Actually, this is something that I am working on at the moment and the, the I feel like a bit of a politician in the sense that I'm not really going to answer the question, but I'm just not going to say that. Well, I just did. There you go. Um, actually, there's so much for me to achieve between now and when I actually pop my clogs. I mean, I'm only 38. Mm -hmm. So the legacy is going to be huge. I, I love the, the complete positivity of Yes, obviously I'm going to invent something or do something of massive significance for the planet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I yeah. kind of, my sort of idea, because the thing is, I was looking, I was thinking about this recently because we've all, we're all time rich now and we've got, um, we can overthink things. I'm really good at it. I'm really good at overanalyzing. Mm, yeah, we all. Actually, yeah, I think it's not a bad thing. Um, what would I like? to have people say at my funeral. It's the same thing. That, 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 that's yes, basically, it's, it a, was, it's the same yeah. question. Yeah. Well, I kind of thought I would quite like something on quite a grand scale down in Westminster. Okay. In terms of funeral. So I mean, I don't want to just the, be like slipping away here. I'd really like it to be more like a celebration of how people... And were massively we, affected by your brand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Let's let's go deep here, though. But is that is that the is the flip of that not just massive insecurity? Ooh, I like it. No, I've got no interest in that chat. Actually, isn't it just lovely that we can all support each other and improve the world as a whole, rather than? I just think a lot of us have. Well, when I say a lot of us, my parents. Let's use my parents as a prime example here. They think because they're old school that one person can't impact the world. Not true. Martin Luther King, he was only one person. Mm -hmm. He impacted the world. You know, there's, there's been, I mean, that's like tip of the iceberg. Um, but actually, how much could we achieve if then we all collectively got on board with something that was for the greater good? Mm -hmm. Well, loads. Because if one person can make a change, which we know is true, then it's oh it's mind-blowing how so, even the situation that we're in at the moment which is so bizarre. tough for everybody is bizarre I, i've never used the word bizarre so much in my entire life yeah but i also think it's tough for people to get their heads around because we've all been forced into this situation nobody's chosen to not see their i've not seen my parents you know, my parents are a good age and I'm slagging them off, but I love them deeply. Mm -hmm. And I'm not um, seeing my work colleagues. I'm not going to my business. You know, I'm not seeing my lovely wee clients that I've known for 
18 years, you know, our lives are massively impacted by this. How do we come out and go, okay, there was loads of stuff I didn't sign up for, but on the flip side, it's made me make little small changes in my own life and that's had a ripple effect. And one of the basic things that I was thinking of was look how many people that are out running and walking every single day. Mm -hmm. I think we as a nation could become so much healthier and there's so many good positive things that are going to come out of this. That's what I'm trying to see. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I can't I, remember I, what the original question was. I've not, I've yes. actually, I've no idea. I lost the world. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think that the whole thing is it's, like you say, it's all about mindset. It's all, it's all about... Oh, how do we change this? Yeah. It's, it's huge, huge. Uh, yeah, and, it and it makes And it makes all the difference. So, um, but how are, you, how are you coping with everything? You, you, I mean, your, your usual smiley self? Or, or have you just kind of completely lost it? And this is just, <laughs> this is just mania. <laughs> this is just insanity. But like, in a hi, hi, there's a person <laughs> oh. there. there. <laughs> I'm speaking to someone. Do you know, actually, I do genuinely believe that a lot of positive will come out of this. Yeah. And I suppose I'm sort of during the day when I'm working now, I'm sort of applying for grants. I'm trying to work out how to keep the doors of my salon open, how to keep my team happy and sort of relaxed over this sort of period of time, which how does anybody know how long that's going to go on for? No. And I suppose a lot of fear around this is fear of the unknown. So I am an incredibly upbeat, positive person anyway, but I'm also, this is going to sound very big headed. I'm also very creative in my thinking. So sometimes the problem's not the problem, it's the way you think about the problem. So it's like, how can I actually turn this on its side? So I'm actually looking at loads of different business ideas to maintain my business, even though I can't do my hands-on job, and yeah. none, as can none of my team. So actually, what I'm, another sort of positive thing that I'm loving from this situation is that, you know, even us having this conversation on Zoom, um, I know Kelly, who's phenomenal, you know Kelly, and, you know, Kelly and I, um, she is my business coach, essentially, and um, we go running together. <laughs> she goes running, I go running, and we track it on Strava. Right. And um, we have a little catch-up. We do a little video WhatsApp chat before the run, we work out because what we would talk about if we were meeting up, what would we talk about? What's, what's on my brain for the business? And the two of us go away and sort of think about it. And then we go back to our own houses, get back on the WhatsApp chat and sort of look our brains to each other. And we sort of bat ideas off each other. Now, to me, isn't that just such a great creative way of me totally. continuing to yeah. do my coaching and my running and um, how I can improve my business even when um, it all looks a wee bit stressful. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, so, I, yeah. But endlessly positive is basically... That's what the, I'm like, the, though. The approach, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, can, I think there's, like, I suppose, like, on my podcast, I'm obsessed with what's good, what's good, what's good. Now, mm -hmm. if you keep asking that, um, that question, it turns out loads is good. Um, it's just that we go back into the negative, um, yep. what um, caveman brain, we'll call it, where we just assume everything's doom and gloom. And you know what? There will be a lot of really tough stuff. That's mm. what being human is about. I've, um, I've been building resilience <laughs> for years now. Mm. And that's purely because I've got a business and having a business is really tough. Everybody that has a business knows that you better be resilient because... That's the name of the game. You, you don't know what's going to get thrown at you. And I've had a really 
really tough year last year. And um, I really struggled with a lot of different sort of issues within my team and within like the dynamics of the background workings of the business um, yeah. and the funding and the financing bit. And at one point I thought, well, this is it. Like, I, I was, this is it. And, you know, it just shows you that actually it's just building resilience. Yeah. And if you can get on board with that and you can really sort of strengthen yourself and your mindset or, and get creative. But mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I think you can only really do that when you're not in the stressed out caveman brain. You've got mm -hmm. to get yeah. into your creative brain. Yeah, and I think it, it's going back to what you said earlier on about overthinking. You know, I, I tend to get into the overthinking set of things if I'm not busy. Um, yeah. And then that can just lead to sort of negative thinking. But um, Absolutely. So I just, I, I like to be busy, you know, and I'm, I'm liking to be creative and that kind of stuff because it kind of keeps me in that side of the brain, not the other yes. side of the brain, you know. It, it's so true. And I think all of us actually are, like, we're naturally designed to think of negative things that could kill us. Yeah, I know I mean, it sounds like, extreme. You know, as, the, as that caveman, you know, yeah. your, your protection, uh, you're protecting yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it's difficult if you're a business owner and you're not busy because we're used to always being busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am... People will say to me, I don't know anybody busier than you. And I'm like, well, ask any business owner. They will keep themselves busy. There's yeah. always something to do. Yeah. And I suppose I am good at that as well. But I think maybe it's, it's been nice in a sense to take a step back from the business and have a bit of reflection and go, right, what's working mm -hmm. for me as a person? And it's not just about the business because you are your business, aren't you? when you yeah. think about it. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm yeah. my business. Yeah. I think most people are because we put so much of ourselves into it that it is, it is us, um, if that makes sense. But I think it's nice to kind of take a step back and go, is this still what I want? Is the way I run it at the moment the way I want to continue to run it? Or actually, was there wee things that you'd like to change? Because now is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I um, love. So, as regards your podcast, right? Yeah. Where is this going out and when does it start? That's a really, really good question. Uh, you don't know yet. Are you, are, you, are you using Anchor? Is that you, the, the app I was telling you about? I'm actually not. Um, I, I, it's not. Why do I even bother? <laughs> Greg, it was a great suggestion and I loved it. And it's not that I didn't do it. But I utterly dismissed it 100%. <laughs> it's not that. Along that. with the other actually, 10 shit suggestions that you gave me. Don't be upset or negative about this. No. So essentially, um, I have a friend called Richard um, and he has, um, he's bored. <laughs> and he, okay. he, um, for his business is marketing businesses. And he's pretty bored at the moment and uh, has a bit of, has quite a lot of time on his hands. And very kindly, um, I'm sure there'll be some sort of payment in at the end of this all, um, has kindly sort of gone on and said, look, why don't I do um, sort of the pushing out of it and you just sit, you record it and just send it to me. And he- You wanna watch there? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I kind of thought, to be honest, when he said this and we'd had a discussion about it, after speaking to you, I thought, oh, this sounds all very plausible and I could do it. However, um, I'm really all about the creative stuff and the content. Same, uh, same here. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I'd much rather be coming up with the creative ideas and not necessarily having to do the tech bit. A, a lot of it. You know, I mean, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not massively techy. I know what uh -huh. I need to know. Um, yeah. And I've ended up you know, I'm, I'm an audio engineer, but I'm more a record producer before I'm an audio engineer, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. the creative side of things, but. I think it's the case for me. I'm just an ideas girl. It's the mm -hmm. same in the salon. I'm always the one to come up with all the ideas and 
I just, that's my thing. And I thought, well, if Richard, who's delightful and bored, if he wanted to come out with all the other stuff, then um, I'm really doing him a favour. Yes. Yes, you're helping, I mean, h- helping him through a difficult time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> where he's really bored and looking for things I to mean, do. He's really bored and um, he's got nothing else to do. I mean, he doesn't, he knows it. He is like, he's, he's loving this. Mm-hmm. So, and he gets to listen to a lot of my podcasts. So he's, getting, he's getting the benefit of your content. I said this to him. He has also started t- doing some of this. I do ones for Bears and Beauty. And you'll be able to see very quickly that I do the Bears and Beauty ones because the tech on it is poor to middling. And he keeps texting me going, what are you doing? These um, subtitles look terrible. <laughs> so he's, he's the guy and he is going to make sure that this looks a, quite a bit more professional Good. than... Um, what I would be able to come out with. So I thought that's actually everyone, everyone's a winner. Greg. Everyone, everyone's going to benefit from that. Everyone's. And the world will, will benefit from actually having daily Shirley content. Do you know, this is the thing. He can make mm-hmm. this happen quicker than I have the ability to do. I can keep doing the chats mm-hmm. and he can literally, he can make this happen for you as a person, Greg. Mm-hmm. You could, you can now hear Shirley every day, hopefully from Monday. Right. Okay. That was the question. That's what that was the answer to the yeah, question you right. asked me about five and, minutes. And no doubt, with with what he's doing, it's going to be everywhere that where that that it needs to be. Yeah. That's the important thing. I was trying to get the plug in at the end, so it's kind of like people know where to find the podcast, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So it will be on Spotify and iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. I think no, Apple no po- Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And all that. Oh, Apple Co- Podcasts. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um. Anyway, Shirley, um, thank you so much for your time and talking absolute shite for God knows how long. A kid's hour. Um, stay, stay safe I and well. You <laughs> stay too. Safe. And um, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing your podcast. Um, Me too. I can't it, wait is, to hear yours. Is there going to be hair care tips and stuff? No, it's... Do you know, we will, I will do some tips. I've got loads of tips and hints. Um, I'm obsessed with self-improvement. So why not? I can't do hair care. That would be, be mm. one stipulation is hair. I mean, I know my hair looks all right, but it's, it's, I'm a beauty therapist, Greg. So I almost said something by accident there. It's like if, you, you know, if you're doing the, the massage thing and you're doing the hair thing, as opposed to tips and hints, it would be hips and tints. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. Uh, oh, at least you made yourself laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much, Sean. It was thanks so to- lovely to speak to you. Take care. All right, bye. Bye.